Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to cover some log management features in vRealize Log Inside Cloud. This includes tasks such as log forwarding and tagging, log masking, and filters. Sometimes we need to forward specific logs, such as audit or authentication logs, to a seam for security teams to create reports for auditing. So we'll go over how to do that and a few more log management features right now. Let's start by going to our log management screen in Log Inside Cloud. And now we have all of our options to perform different actions for our logs. So we'll start with log forwarding. As you can see here, we're forwarding to a few sources already. We're forwarding Azure logs, NSX logs, and AWS logs to different locations. So let's create a new configuration. Basically, this will use the Log Insight Cloud HTTP API to push all logs or a set of logs to a third party location. So we just give a name. We can tell our forwarder to go on-prem or to the cloud, give it an endpoint type, let's say Splunk. We have our two out of the box endpoints, Splunk and Azure Sentinel, and then we can have a generic one if we want to build our own forwarder. So if we want to forward to Splunk, we just have to offer a Splunk endpoint URL for your Splunk cloud. And in the header, we would put an API key to authorize, and then we can forward all logs, or we can only forward specific logs. So if we really want to forward logs from administrator accounts to go to Splunk, so our security team can write reports for themselves and for auditors, we can do that. So we have administrator chosen. This gives us a brief look at the logs that it's going to send to Splunk, anything with local administrator. So that could be pretty important. Now, once this is all filled in with our authorization header and our endpoint URL, we can save our log forwarding configuration, and then we will start shipping logs, in this case, to our Splunk Cloud instance. We can also forward logs back on-prem using our Log Insight proxy to forward to Log Insight on-prem. So in the case of your Log Insight Cloud instance being your primary log collector, we can then take some of those logs and ship them back on-site to Log Insight using the forwarding abilities and the proxy forwarder. Here we have our log processing rules. So if we have a certain log we only want to keep a few days of instead of 30 days, we can change the retention. We would give the variable retention rule a name a number of retention days, and then we would enter our query information to pull those logs up. And then once we verify the proper logs in this window, we can save this, and then those logs will be retained for a certain number of days. We can also tag logs. So let's take a look at a few of our tags here. So we have our VCF logs here, and we're adding a field name log type value VCF. So every time a log comes in containing this certain query, so it looks like VCF ESXi, which is a VMware Cloud Foundation ESXi host. We also add another field called log type with the value VCF. So this is good for tagging your logs. If you want to separate them by data center, or if you want to separate them by hardware type or application type, you can add these tags here to make querying logs easier. We have some filters here. If we want to just drop logs completely, maybe there's something we really don't want to see. We have here drop garbage logs. So if we edit this, we can drop entire logs or selected fields for a certain query. So we have here these event types we really don't care about. Maybe they're flooding our log inside cloud and they're taking up valuable space that we'd rather keep for other logs. We can just give these event types and then tell log inside cloud to drop the entire log and it will be dropped before it is ingested. Then finally, in the log processing rules section, we have log masking. So if we want to mask things like phone numbers, social security numbers, or IP addresses, we replace that phone number with asterisks. So this is good for masking sensitive information that get pulled into the logs from an application. Sometimes we cannot help if an application has been developed to show certain sensitive data in the logs. So then we can mask this before it is ingested. So Log Inside Cloud is never keeping the sensitive data in its database. It is immediately masking it and then ingesting it. And then finally, we have a log upload feature. We can upload 10 log files of 10 megs each in the .log and .txt formats. So if we have a log file from a system that's not currently ingesting within Log Insight Cloud, or from an operating system or an application where the Log Insight agent is installed, and a specific log file has not been configured for ingestion, we can take that log file, configure it for ingestion, and if we have the older log file still available, we can upload those into Log Insight Cloud so that you have, so you have an uninterrupted stream of log data. Also, 
if you're trying to do root cause analysis and you have a separate log that's not being ingested, that would help in the correlation. You can upload that log to Log Insight Cloud and the events will be ingested into the primary partition where then you can query on them and do correlation. So that's our total review of all the log management features in Log Insight Cloud. Recap, you can forward your logs to different destinations, whether they're Log Insight on-prem or whether it's a third-party tool like Splunk. You can process your logs with log processing rules to have them kept only for a certain amount of time or dropped immediately. Or you can also mask them or add tags. Or you can use the log upload feature to upload logs to Log Insight Cloud that aren't already there to do root cause analysis or to complete logs that you are missing that were not properly ingested. Now, please feel free to go into your own Log Insight Cloud instance and give all this a try. Thank you so much for watching.